Stephen King's The Dark Tower series is one of, if not my favorite fantasy series of all time. It ranks right at the top, and there are a number of different books in Stephen King's collection that definitely help your understanding, make you more aware, make you more conscious of all the inner workings, the inner mechanisms that play a role in the progression of this series. So today, I'm talking to you about my definitive recommended reading order for The Dark Tower series. If you do not follow this, you will never self-actualize. You will be a shell of yourself. You will be subject to eternal damnation. Let's talk about the books. The first one on this list is going to be optional, and I say it's going to be optional because it is a pretty tall ask as being not an official book in the series, and that is going to be Stephen King's The Stand. This is a great book, but this is a very long book, 1,400 pages. So if you don't want to read a 1,400-page book that isn't part of the fantasy series to begin with, I don't blame you. There will be a few things, maybe a few characters, elements that are worth being aware of in this book that will make your Dark Tower reading experience possibly more meaningful, but I don't think it's entirely necessary for you to read The Stand before you read Stephen King's Dark Tower. But if you want to read a bunch of Stephen King's work, I think this one may be a worthwhile one to check out before diving into the Dark Tower series. The next book on this list, pretty simple, Stephen King's The Gunslinger, the first book in the Dark Tower series. You can finally get started with The Dark Tower after reading those 1400 pages of the stand. But again, don't feel obligated to do so. This book's going to feel weird. You're going to feel like you're kind of lost, but it's very worth it. And I want you to hang tough after you read this book and continue on. Likewise, you're going to follow the logical progression and move to The Drawing of Three, book two in the Stephen King Dark Tower series. The series is gonna, definitely going to come together a little bit more when it comes to book two. You can continue on there. To book three, The Wastelands. This is where the series really picks up and I think finds its footing as one of the best fantasy series out there. So The Wastelands, one of my favorite books on the Dark Tower series, one of my favorite Stephen King books to begin with. Now, you're three books into the Dark Tower series, and at this point, the series has really rounded into form. So I'm going to veer you off course again, and we're going to move to Salem's Lot. Chances are, if you're a Stephen King reader, you've read a lot of his books, you may very well have read this book at this point already. But if you haven't, I would recommend doing so either now or after book four of the Dark Tower series. But three books in a row from the same series. Maybe you want to take a little bit of an intermission, a little bit of a pause. I think Salem's Lot is a great book to do so. And again, there are, I'll call them elements, you are going to want to be aware of down the road in the Dark Tower series that occur and are present within Salem's Lot. This is a book about a small town that essentially gets taken over by vampires. It is a rewrite, a reimagination of Dracula with a little bit of a Stephen King spin on it. So I definitely recommend reading Salem's Lot in general, but in your progression of Dark Tower reading, definitely before book five at the latest, you want to have read Salem's Lot. The next book, we are back on the road to the Dark Tower with Wizard and Glass. There's a strong possibility that this is Stephen King's best work and his favorite book of mine out of all of his work. I think this is where the series is at its very best. There's a very interesting frame story structure within Wizard and Glass and the characters really come together in an interesting way and we get a really amazing look at the backstory of our hero Roland Shane within this one. We will then move on to book five, Wolves of the College. This is where the series gets really weird, but you're still on your journey towards the Dark Tower. There are lots of multiverse elements coming into play at this point, interesting battle scenes, an unforgettable read. The Dark Tower series spans seven books, but if you followed my definitive reading order for this series at this point, you've already read seven books if you chose to read The Stand and Salem's Lot. I'm going to veer you off course again for another intermission. We're going to move to Insomnia. Now again, this is a pretty big book to add as supplemental reading to the Dark Tower series, but I find it entirely necessary. If there is one book that you need to read before you get into the latter half of the Dark Tower series, it is either going to be Insomnia or Salem's Lot. I recommend reading both. Again, I will call them elements that play an extremely integral role in the series once you get into the last few books. Insomnia is one of them. It's a pretty big detour. This is a pretty big book about a guy who is experiencing insomnia, and he sort of transcends into some sort of astral hypersensory plane and starts to experience some elements that cross over into the realm of the Dark Tower universe. There is an extremely, extremely important plot point in this book that will make you a lot more aware and allow you to enjoy and understand what is going on in these last few books. So make sure that you read this before, I would say, book six of the Dark Tower series. Moving 
on to our next book, Hearts in Atlantis. This is sort of like a four-part multi-novella connecting thread sort of book from Stephen King. There's a particular part in this book called Low Men in Yellow Coats that's going to give you a really good preview of what's to come in the Dark Tower universe and will help you out a lot along the way. The idea with these supplemental reads in the Dark Tower series is to make you more aware of what's going on. Low Men in Yellow Coats, just read through all of Hearts in Atlantis. And then finally, we are back on the journey to the Dark Tower with Book 6, Song of Susanna. At this point, you will pretty much just finish out the series as is. And then finally, we move to the last installment in the series, The Dark Tower, Book 7. Now, there's also a book called Wind Through the Keyhole that Stephen King wrote years later that was sort of a re-entering into the Dark Tower universe. In this book, Roland Shane sort of enters into that frame story plot structure, and he's telling some more backstory that helps understand his character a little bit more. This is technically book four and a half to my knowledge, so if you want to insert this into your reading order after book four within those supplemental books that I put between book four and book five, you're more than welcome to do so. But I think for nostalgic reasons, this would be more effective to visit after you have read everything in the Dark Tower. An optional book in my definitive reading order that you could really insert at any point, but would be for the most part redundant for the same reasons I would recommend reading The Stand would be The Eyes of the Dragon. This is a fun, short, fantasy book from Stephen King that features a key character in the Dark Tower universe. Again, I would generally recommend this to Stephen King fans, fantasy fans, people who want to have every single example of Stephen King's multiverse nailed down in their reading. When it comes to your understanding of the Dark Tower series, I don't think it's altogether too necessary or completely necessary for this reading order. This would be the one optional read that I put in that sort of side column for my definitive reading order. So, in in total, my definitive recommended reading order for the Dark Tower series spans 12 total books. To summarize the stand, second will be Dark Tower Book 1, The Gunslinger. Third will be Dark Tower Book 2, Drawing of Three. Fourth will be Dark Tower Book 3, The Wastelands. Fifth will be Salem's Lot. Sixth, you will be back on the road to the Dark Tower with Wizard and Glass. Seven, you will continue to Book 5 in the series with Wolves of the Kala. Eight, you will veer off the Road to the Dark Tower and read Insomnia. Nine, with Hearts and Atlantis. Ten, you will return to your journey to the Dark Tower with Song of Susanna. Eleven, you will read the final book in the Dark Tower series. And twelve, you can return to that Dark Tower universe with Wind Through the Keyhole. That is my definitive reading order for the Dark Tower universe. Let me know, besides Eyes of the Dragon and some other optional reads, if I missed any extremely important books in Stephen King's catalog when it comes to the multi multiverse awareness in the general recommended reading order for Stephen King's Dark Tower series. If you've read it already, let me know down in the comments. If you haven't and you eventually take my reading order into consideration and read through these 12 books, let me know how it went for you. Let me know if it was worthwhile for you. I'd love to hear your opinion on this reading order in the comments below. Otherwise, that's all I got for you today. So get reading. See you at the Dark Tower. Peace.